Rand Paul from Kentucky. Senator, welcome back to the show. Great to see you. I, I, I want to start with comments the president made just yesterday. He described himself as a tax cutter. He criticized Republicans for raising taxes. Does he have it right? <laughs> this is a guy who, for the last four months, has been driving around on his taxpayer finance bus telling everybody that he can find in the whole country that he wants to raise taxes on the job creators. So it's going to be a tough sell now that he's uh, going to change his mind and try to brag that he's been cutting taxes. It's going to be a hard sell. A hard sell. Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey, described him as a bystander in many of the conversations that have gone on in the past two years in Washington. Do you agree with that? Well, yeah, I've had uh, personal conversations with the president where I've asked him, can't we fix Social Security by letting the age go up gradually and means testing the benefits? And one on one, he seems somewhat sympathetic to fixing it. But really, all he seems to be concerned about now is he is consumed with being reelected. Mm -hmm. And he's consumed that his only way to get reelected is to bash uh, those who create jobs and say that he has to go get them. If someone has three cars, he's going to go take one of their cars and give it to someone else. I mean, this whole redistribution and envy towards wealth and towards job creators is really all I see coming from. I'm not sure he wants to pass any legislation anymore. Well, he's definitely on the campaign trail, that's for sure. I want to talk to you about something that happened this week with the Federal Reserve. Uh, our central bank, joining with central banks all over the world, trying to bail out Europe. I know you're highly cr uh, critical of the Federal Reserve. Should they be doing this? Absolutely not. I mean, we've got an, a significant debt problem here. We can barely manage our own debt, much less we're now going to be obligating the taxpayer to pay for the debt in Europe. No, I think it's crazy. You know, during the banking crisis in 2008, we spent $7 trillion without any knowledge of any congressman, without any knowledge of any taxpayers, and a lot of that went to Europe already. We even sent money to Gaddafi's central bank. So we fought a war against Gaddafi right after we were actually financing his bank to make sure his bank didn't go under during the panic. That's the craziness of this policy. And of course, you're talking about the $7.7 .7 trillion that the Federal Reserve uh, doled out in loans to banks all over the world, but mostly to our very own banks. I also want to talk to you about a report out today that bankers here in this country had a secret meeting with the Federal Reserve regarding Europe in which those uh, bankers, I guess, told Ben Bernanke what they wanted the bank to do regarding Europe's crisis. They had a long list of suggestions. Should those meetings be held? Should they be held in secret? No, it worries me, and I think, uh, you know, there needs to be transparency. We've been asking, many of us, for an audit of the Fed. We had a partial audit, and we did discover that, you know, 87 foreign banks got TARP money. The bank bailout money went right through AIG and went to foreign banks. So, no, I'm opposed to the secrecy of the Fed. I'm also concerned that some of this money gets skimmed off the top by very, very wealthy elite international bankers who are skimming off money that is being exchanged by the Federal Reserve as they buy our debt or as they buy foreign well, debt. Senator, that's I think a, that's unfair. That's a pretty heavy charge. Do you have anything to back it up? Well, when I say skimming off the top, I don't mean in an illegal fashion. It's actually illegal. I'm talking about the percentage they get. For example, when the Federal Reserve buys our debt from the U.S. Treasury, the Federal Reserve doesn't buy it directly from the Treasury. They use a bond trader. Same happens internationally. We, a lot of times, the Federal Reserve probably does not buy it directly from a bank. They use an intermediary. The intermediary, what I mean skimming off the top, what they're doing is they take small percentages, but they add up to hundreds of millions of dollars that goes into the pockets of private bankers. So private bankers do get wealthy off of the massive debt and trading and buying and selling of our debt both domestically and internationally. Well, pretty heavy charges. Uh, I, I want to talk to you, too, about the Super Committee. The failure of the Super Committee uh, to find any savings at all. You said they should go big and find big savings for the federal government over time. They didn't even find little savings. What kind of will do you see in Washington to cut government spending? 
I think the problem is is that we've been trying to say there has to be this grand bargain. I do want people to go big, but maybe in order to go big, we should go step at a time. I think maybe we should look at Social Security as an individual problem, and it's nobody's hmm. fault. It's not Republicans' fault, not Democrats' fault. It's because people are living longer, and we have less workers and more retirees. But fix Social Security, fix Medicare, maybe do tax reform, but maybe say that all moving parts don't have to come together in one grand bargain that maybe we have two or three deals that we can get that are smaller deals. Well, you know, it's funny. Everybody's willing to try anything at this point, right? Because nothing seems to work when it comes to cutting spending. Washington seems so against it. And yet, uh, there are automatic cuts that will go in place. Many Republicans concerned that cuts to defense will be problematic. Here's what Leon Panetta had to say about the uh, cuts in store for the military. He says, we would have the smallest ground forces since 1940, the smallest number of ships since 1915, and the smallest air force in its history. Do you think it's that dangerous to put in place the cuts that are called for? I think he's putting sort of an alarmist spin on this. If you look at the numbers over 10 years, defense spending, even if we sequester the money, will still go up about 10% over 10 years. In 10 years, we'll be spending 10% more than we do now. And really, after a one-year dip in military spending, it gradually rises over a seven-year period. Mm -hmm. So, no, I think it's part of the ultimate compromise is conservatives like myself who believe national defense is important need to say that every dollar spent on the military is not sacred and not wisely spent. We've doubled the amount of military spending in the last 10 years. In order to find a compromise, in order to save money and balance the budget, you will have to cut some military spending, but you'll also have to cut uh, some excess spending and waste in welfare and other domestic spending programs. Well, I know what you mean about that. No matter what you do, that spending just seems to go up and up and up. Senator, thanks for helping us out tonight. Great to see you. Thank you. All right, here's your chance to weigh in on our issue tonight. Our question is this. Obama says he's